What's up, fam? It has been a while, but thank you for continuing to tune in to my part three video, and this is going to be the second half to that video. So let's just already get it out. I have heard it today. You probably wasn't thinking about it just yet, or you might have been thinking about it. I get it. I look like the princess Esmeralda from Hunchback of Notre Dame. I get it. But now that we got that out of the way, let's talk. Let's talk numbers. So the last video I shared with you all, the egg retrieval, how many were fertilized, um, how many were mature, how many made it to the biopsy stage, and then our final number after our uh, genetic testing, six girls, seven frozen boys. I mean, we got a whole football team. So as great as that news is, there is a part of me that is feeling a little bit sad. I just had a conversation with the doctors not too long ago. It's been about six weeks since um, April 13th that I had the egg retrieval. You have all been following me. I went through a hill of healing and everything. We just had our meeting with the doctor on the 19th and I was certain that our embryo transfer was about to start. And to my surprise, she said like another six to eight weeks. And I'm like, I don't understand. Why am I waiting another month and a half? I am so confused. Please fill the comments, let me know. Is it supposed to be two and a half, three months after egg retrieval that you do an embryo transfer? As I was asking her some questions, she was letting us know that it's going to be the second period um, after egg retrieval when we do the embryo transfer and go through all the steps and I'm still learning. I'm not sure exactly how it works. Um, all I know is, is that my period that I had 10 days after my egg retrieval, was it a period? Was it a reaction to the trauma that my body had experienced? And that's why I was bleeding, but I considered that to be a first period. So this one that I'm supposed to have this week, I consider to be a second period. Six weeks after is when your first period, your first official period happens. Then they're going to start doing all the testing and checking my um, uterus, making sure my lining looks good, any medicine that I might need, whatever the case may be. There's like a monitoring that happens. So I have to call them on the first day of my bleed, which should be any day now. Then my second period that happens after this, which will be toward the end of June, would be the period that we start the embryo transfer. Finally. So I'm still questioning when we do the embryo transfer, is it a couple of weeks of shots first before they transfer it in? I mean, what does that process look like? So I just wanted to talk a little bit. Um, obviously, that's a frozen embryo transfer known as feet. Um that is the journey. That's my journey. That's my clinic's journey. So I will say that if you're going to do this for a frozen transfer, please make sure that you know that it takes time. You know, my doctor said that it's going to go by fast. And I mean, even though these six weeks went by pretty fast after my egg retrieval, it still is a long time for someone who has paid so much money, by the way, our final bill. And then they had a nerve to tell you, don't stress, live your life, go do acupuncture, buy these different juices, all this other type of stuff. And I'm like, how can I not stress? That's how much I make in a year. And you just took it in a couple of weeks. I mean, so some of the things that I needed to do to distract myself because I was so frustrated was I decided to just go back to my holistic living and just kind of eat better. I mean, obviously, I had gained some weight from all the process. I was already kind of getting a little, you know, thick 
but um, I ended up gaining like 10, 12 pounds, you know, over this, which was so crazy. Um, so I'm trying to lose that. Um, I'm doing a detox tea right now. You know, I understand that these things may not help 100% as far as like pineapple juice you hear. You hear about McDonald's french fries. You hear about uh, pomegranate juice, different things like that. But what I will say is, is that it's all toward healthy living except for the fries. The fries are... I wanted to let you all see a little bit of the conversation that happened between the doctor, myself, and my husband that day, and just hear some of the stat. We actually had some really, really good testing scores that came back as far as grading. So the way that we grade embryos is that we look at a couple of different factors. So the first thing we look at is how developed the embryo is, like how advanced it is. And we give that a number, usually one through six, six mm -hmm. being the most advanced, one being the least developed. Mm -hmm. um, then the embryology lab will look at two different parts of the embryo. They grade the part that ultimately becomes the baby called the inner cell mass. Mm -hmm. And they grade the part that becomes the placenta. Okay. And they give each of those parts a letter grade of A through D. Obviously A being the best, D yep. being the worst. Mm -hmm. So when you see the embryo grading, it typically is like a number and then two letters gotcha. where you have six AA at one end of the spectrum and you have like one DBD at the other end of the spectrum and everything in between. Gotcha, yep. In general, um, threes, fours, fives, and sixes are considered good. Mm -hmm. Ones and twos, not so much. Mm -hmm. And A's and B's are considered quite good. C's and D's, not so much. Okay. That's kind of like generally the rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. And um, I can say to you that, I mean, almost all, all oh let me through, make sure here, almost all with the exception of one were graded as like three through six a's and b's and only one the, that last embryo biopsy on day six was graded as a four c b and that was your only c in the bunch so across the board the embryo quality was was quite good mm -hmm. and in general when you see those kinds of like you know the threes fours five sixes with the a's and the b's in general the successors are going to be between that 60 and 70 percent okay. range mm -hmm. for the most part mm -hmm. with obviously some of the higher graded ones that you know the five and six aas being closer to 70 percent and like the threes and the fours bbs maybe more like this you know 55 to 60 percent gotcha. kind of range mm -hmm. so that's kind of how you break it down um Tommy and I uh, basically were told that out of our 13 eggs, all of our eggs genetically were great gradings. All of our eggs are A's and B's. 11 out of 13 of our eggs made it to biopsy on day five. So we have really good and promising numbers. Only one of our eggs was a BC that um, biopsied on day six, but I'm trying to have all 12 of my babies, y'all. I don't know what my husband going to say. I don't know how he feel, but if they all good, mama is going to find a way. I hope that you all enjoyed that. Um, I know this was a very tough conversation for us to have, but... Um, our next video is going to be our embryo transfer and that journey. So thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, please feel free, drop them below in the comment and uh, let's talk about making a baby.